The year is 1932. Pierce Arrow, which was one of the three P's of prestige, Peerless and Packard are the other two, with Pathfinder being the silent P. But to be 100% honest, Pathfinder was pretty much gone from the car market in 1932, exiting the market in 1917. But it's worth mentioning, Pathfinder offered a V12. Anyway, Pierce Arrow was under Studebaker's ownership during this time and a lot of people for whatever reason look down upon this era of pierce arrow the studebaker era from 1928 through 1933 but without studebaker's ownership pierce arrow would have never had these two incredible engines pierce arrow was powered by huge displacement engines with the largest one being 13.5 liters and that was in a four cylinder just to be clear the eight came out in 1929 for the 1930 model year the v12 was first available in 1931 for the 1932 model year the v12 was designed by carl wise during the late 20s early 30s companies began offering more and more cylinders and contrary to popular belief more cylinders back then didn't necessarily mean higher horsepower figures rather it made for an impressively smooth running engine as previously mentioned companies offered v12s before the 1930s but they didn't really catch on until the 1930s Packard was the first company to offer a V12 here stateside in 1915, coming out the same year that the first American V8 came out, Cadillac. Packard would discontinue the V12 in 1924, which they called Twin Six, being replaced by a straight eight. But by the 1930s, companies wanted to give their customers bigger, more powerful, refined statement pieces to power their automotive art. Just for the record, the second wave of 12-cylinder car was led by Cadillac in 1930 for the 1931 model year. Cadillac also took it a step further by offering a V16. Marmon was the other company to offer a V16. Peerless, another P from the three Ps of uh, Prestige, they were to offer a V16 as well, but they only made one prototype. And just for the record, Lincoln came out with their V12 in 1932. Franklin offered an air-cooled V12 in 1932. Pierce Arrow was 1932. Packard came in 1933. Believe it or not, Auburn offered a 12-cylinder in 1932, and it was the cheapest 12-cylinder you could buy anywhere. Both the Pierce Arrow 8 and V12 are regarded as two of the most advanced engines made up until this point in time. Most, if not all, engines from this era use solid valve lifters and need to be adjusted over time. Both the 8 and the V12 used hydraulic lifters under oil pressure that provides automatic valve adjustment. The V12 is essentially two six-cylinder engine blocks that are set at 80 degrees cylinder block angle on a common aluminum crankcase. Blocks were cast iron, aluminum cylinder head, valves are in the block, L-head valve configuration, hydraulic lifters, pressurized oil and lubrication, both the intake and exhaust plumbing. Plumbing is the key word, are in the valley between the two banks of cylinders. Each Pierce Arrow was run at full throttle while on the engine dyno for 12 hours, and then they were pulled off of the engine dyno, taken apart, thoroughly inspected, put back together, and then shipped to either the customer or the dealer for purchase. Pierce Arrow ran 24-hour flight of Arrow, averaging 117 miles per hour on the salt flats. It introduced in 1932 and would be the smallest displacement of Pierce Arrow V12, 398 cubic inch displacement L head V12, 6 liters. It was good for 140 horsepower, 3000 RPM. This is just an estimate, 245 pound feet or 332 newton meters around 1800 RPM with a bore of 3 and 1 quarter inches and a stroke of 4 inches. Compression was anywhere between 5.1 to 6.4 to 1. This engine was only used for 1932, and it could be found in the smaller chassis, the 137 through 142. It was launched as the Model 53. 
But by 1933, the 398 was deemed to be too feeble. The 429, which also came out in 1932, would become the base engine. Also introduced in 1932, 429 cubic inch displacement L-head V12, 6.5 liters. This was the halo engine, so to speak, the, the top, the cream of the crop engine for 1932. But in 1933, it becomes the base engine. It was good for 150 horsepower, around 3,000 RPM. This is just an estimate. 262 pound-feet or 355 newton meters, around 1,800 RPM, with a bore of 3.375 inches and a stroke of 4 inches. Compression was anywhere between 5.1 to 6.4 to 1 years this engine was used. 1932 through 1934. In 1933, Pierce Arrow would increase the bore size to three and a half inches, bringing overall displacement to 462 cubic inch displacement L-head V12, 7.6 liters. It was good for anywhere between 175 to 185 horsepower, around 3,000 RPM, an estimated 323 pound-feet or 437 newton meters around 1800 rpm with a bore of three and a half inches and a stroke of four inches compression was 6.4 to one years this engine was used 1933 through 1938 many will argue and say that the pierce arrow 8 and v12 were the best engines made in their day unfortunately they were built at a time when nobody had any money to eat, let alone buy amazing cars. The effects of the Great Depression wreaked havoc on all businesses, especially the automotive business. Pierce Arrow, to try to save their sinking ship, they did not want to go down the same path as Packard did. They did not want to water down their prestigious brand with Junior Series cars. The Junior Series cars saved Packard with the 120 and 115C offerings. Pierce Arrow had a totally different Hail Mary that came in the form of travel trailers called Travel Lodges, camping with style and class. An outside-the-box, unorthodox approach to a solution to a problem of just selling more stuff. They just needed to sell, they needed to make a product, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough to save the company. Pierce Arrow would cease production in 1938. The company was forced to liquidate both the straight eight and V12. Engine rights and tooling was sold to Seagrave and would power fire trucks for years to come. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather. These are not fair by any stretch of the imagination, but which one would you rather have? 1932 Pierce Arrow V12 or 1938 Pierce Arrow V12 or 1934 Pierce Arrow V12. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. On to the second scenario. Outside of the Silver Arrow, I'm going to post this, what, the, what the Silver Arrow looks like right here. Outside of this car, what is your favorite Pierce Arrow? Go ahead and put it in the comments section below. Just leave this here for a minute. All right, now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this one. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted. I don't say that for self-worth. I just say if you take the time to post a comment on here, I will definitely read it. And I will be the one getting back to you with the um, responses. Also, if you've owned any of these cars, put your experience in the comment section below. What you liked about the cars, what you didn't like about the cars, what the driving experience was like. All of it, like what you traded it for. I really like reading the stories that people share. Real quick before signing off here, Hershey is always the first full week in October. This week, or yeah, this week. This year, it's the 7th through the 10th up at Hershey Park. The AACA, Antique Automobile Club of America, puts on their Eastern show there. And it's absolutely huge. I'll be there all week. And, um... I got a 52 Chevy truck that I'm going to take there to sell 
if anybody wants to go for a ride or meet up, we can totally do that. I just don't know what the logistics are behind the car corral. I don't know how many times I can get the truck out or, you know, I don't, I've never done it before, but, um, but yeah, I'd love to meet up with you and, um, yeah, if you're interested in meeting up, shoot me an email at what underscore it's underscore like at yahoo.com. Thanks again for everything else. Until next time. Toodaloo!